Welcome to the Exploring New England podcast with Ryan Zip, where each week I will be talking about what makes this historic region such an amazing place to enjoy. From the scenic views to road trip ideas to where to grab the best eats and much more. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Exploring New England podcast with me, Ryan Zip. Hope you guys had another great week as we step into this final stretch of summer here in New England. Um, Last week, we talked a little bit about uh, some ideas for where to maybe go in September, where you can get some uh, better deals and less busy uh, atmosphere on the New England coast as we move into shoulder season soon after the upcoming Labor Day weekend, and also uh, planning a little bit for fall foliage, which is pretty much, uh, you know, just over a month away at this point. So, um, you know, three weeks left of summer, then uh, a month or so where uh, we hit fall and we start chasing the foliage. So it's an exciting time of year, September and October, definitely two of my favorite months here in New England. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I I'm excited for fall, but I never like for time to kind of fly by too quickly, no matter. So uh, excited for it, but, um, you know, also happy to thin as much summer as I can as we uh, head through this next month. So, um, you know, uh, obviously by now you guys know a little bit about my history and, you know, how I got into photography and then my stretches uh, playing music and such. Um, and then back to photography. And, uh, you know, I've basically just always enjoyed traveling around um, New England, you know, especially in recent years with my camera, uh, seeing what I come across, capture, share with everybody, um, you know, and everything else that comes along with it. Sights, sounds, food, all that good stuff. Um, But uh, about... I don't know, I want to say about four years ago now, for the first time, I set up a sort of um, trade with a uh, hotel um, where they would host me for a couple nights, no charge, um, to an area that I already wanted to go that time of year. So it was something that helped me out. And then while there, I would get some uh, different photos, you know, content for them. To then use on those their social media, uh, email marketing, et cetera, things of that nature. So um, it was uh, this place in uh, Mid Coast, Maine, Sheepscot uh, Harbor Resort. I want to say it was called, but kind of right there off Route One as you're making your way towards Booth Bay Harbor. Um, and then I would go on to do you know more and more and kind of get more comfortable with it and keep networking. Um, so it, it's been fun. It's also, uh, you know, something that's helped me out because I get to, you know, stay in these beautiful places and, um, not pay anything out of pocket. And these are already, uh, areas that I want to go during these times of year. So it's not like I'm just going to go. Um, but it's, you know, and then it's something that helps them out where they get photos to, to use and share from, uh, my eye. And, you know, they might, might already have some photos of, the rooms or architecture um, and such, uh, it's definitely beneficial to them just to have a folder now of images to use for the property in general or, you know, specifically for the time of year season I'm there. So definitely love situations like that where it works out for uh, both sides, both parties and totally happy with it. So, um, and my point of all this is this past weekend was uh, another one of these kind of setups where um, a place would host me and I would try to get them some unique, high quality, awesome content to share um, that was via my my eye and my style, you know, how I tend to capture New England in general. So, um, and the spot this past weekend uh, that I went to to do this was the Newport Harbor Island Resort and fittingly in Newport, Rhode Island. So uh, this summer, probably my fourth time back to Newport this summer, fifth plus time since spring. You know, I went there in April to do the daffodils. Um, so I, you know, I get there a fair amount through the year all the time. 
this summer feels like maybe a little more than usual, just the way things worked out. But when it comes to summer spots in New England, uh, Newport is up there as one of the most, you know, iconic and uh, also, you know, fitting. It also helps it's like an hour and 40 minutes from my house. So makes it where I can do day trips and obviously overnights and such if, uh, if it works out. Um, but the spot this time that I stayed and I would stay for two nights, uh, again, Newport Harbor Island Resort, um, formerly known as the Gurney's Newport Resort and Marina. Uh, I'm not sure any other names it's had over the years, but it's out on Goat Island there and um, has the little kind of vintage lighthouse there as well. Um, first time I ever went there was winter was it 2017 or 2018 i'm blanking on the first year there but the first time i was out there was in december freezing cold crazy wind like happens there a lot at that spot no matter the season um but went out there to see the christmas lights on the lighthouse every year they do that and it's really cool uh they've also i think last year they didn't but uh most years they have like an ice skating rink out there other really nice um you know, Christmas uh, type vibes, holiday vibes. So we'll see what they end up doing this year as well there. But, um, you know, formerly uh, Gurney's was the name, now Newport Harbor Island Resort. And it was purchased in 2022, forget the company that purchased it, for a uh, mere $174 million for the property. And I had talked to um, them about staying there in April when I went up to do... um some the daffodil stuff but they weren't opening till like five days later so the timing didn't work out but um later in april they opened back up after doing like 50 million dollars worth of renovations over the winter and you know leading up to then and um you know you could definitely tell they did a great job with it um didn't spend much time inside with the old um you know entity that it was there before the renovations but i have to say they did a great job and you know, they have weddings there. There was one on Sunday when I was there. Um, they host a ton of like business conferences, et cetera, all those things as well. Um, but the property, you know, surrounded by the water there, uh, it's 10 acres. There is 257 rooms, um, and 18 suites there at the, uh, hotel, part of the resort. Um, there's also 22 slips on the marina they have there. I don't know if anyone listening has a giant boat, but I believe they can handle some pretty large uh, vessels there as well. Um, their new branding kind of came along as like the quintessential New England coastal destination. And after finding out, um, you know, staying there for a few days, few nights, I could say they're they're definitely accurate in their uh, in their description. So um, my typical trips, as you know, if you follow my work or you're listening now, we're 24 episodes in. Um, you know, on most of my trips, I tend to try to get around and see as many things possible, um, fit as much as I can in my limited time off. But, um, like I was just saying before, Newport's a spot I've been a lot over the years and already a number of times this summer. So I wasn't in any kind of rush to, to kind of, you know, go crazy and get around anywhere. And since I was there to, you know, get content for them. And then also just to like relax and enjoy it. You know, I wanted to do that and get a little of those low key vibes before things kick up. And I kind of go nonstop uh, for fall because that's such a short window there. So, um, you know, and and I could see why there was a ton of families there. They have a beautiful outdoor pool as well. I don't know if it's one of the few in Newport that actually has a pool like that. But, you know, you have a view of the water the uh, Newport Pell Bridge from everywhere outside, but from the pool as well. So there was tons of families, kids. Um, they're also dog friendly. So a number of people had their pups with them. I feel like I'm seeing more properties these days, you know, do pet friendly if they're big enough to support it. You know, they figure a lot of people, um, someone's dog or dogs are kind of like, you know, just below some of them are like your kids or You know, if they have kids, it's just like another member of the family. So a lot of times they might not want to go away, but hey, if they can bring them with them and it's a beautiful place and area they want to go, that might be the thing that kind of tips them over the edge to choose that property. So um, seeing that more and this spot is pet friendly as well. Um, They have um, their kind of flagship restaurant there, 1639 is the name. 
um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner they offer. There's like an inside area and an outside deck area as well. Um, then on the other side of the outside um, deck area is called a Torpedo Bar and Lounge. Uh, and that's where I ate. I actually stayed here back in July. It was just something on the side I did. I didn't. It wasn't anything involved with the hotel, but it was when I was trying to shoot the Jamestown fireworks from that angle. But um, the fog was so thick, I couldn't see 10 feet in front of me. So I did kind of get to experience this uh, place just one night before this stay. Um, and, but the restaurant there is great. That Torpedo Bar and Lounge, they call it. A little different vibe, but um, great menu there. They do like lunch and dinner. They also have a bar. Um, and there is also a spot down to the right of the pool called the Pineapple Club. They offer like a more limited menu um, as far as what's available up top there. But obviously you can eat it by the pool, eat it by the water. They have some tables there with umbrellas and some drinks as well. Um, inside they do have a spot called the bakery and coffee, pastries, breakfast sandwiches, some lunch sandwiches, snacks and such. I did try a nice mocha there one morning and it wasn't wasn't the greatest. I was definitely bummed out. Um but I don't know if I just got an off time making it or they just don't do a great job with that there. So, um, but yeah, that was just one time. So I'm not sure. Otherwise, the pastries look good. The breakfast sandwiches they were kicking out to people look good. So um, they also offer, if you stay there, complimentary uh, bikes to rent. I believe no charge. There's like blow up paddle boards, kayaks. So there's a number of things first come, first serve that you have there on the property. Um, and it's kind of a nice walking path around a bunch of it as well. Um, there's also these like cabanas you can reserve and kind of rent out where you're just looking out at the bay. Um, at night, I forgot when they turn it on, but they have these different fire pits. You can reserve one to make sure you get a spot there. And then kind of later as uh, you go into the night, there's just a bunch of them on. You can kind of just find one and enjoy if uh, it's on and no one's using it. So um you know it ended up being a thing where i spent a lot of time there and you know besides having my camera with me um relaxed a bunch which again is different for me but it it was nice and uh you know the other nice part about it here it is an island but there is a causeway you know that's how you get there via car you can also walk out to it um but that causeway connects right to the historic uh easton's point neighborhood also known as just the point and, uh, you know, I think I've talked about it before on here, but no matter where I stay in Newport, I always end up taking a walk around there. I feel like whether it's, you know, a morning walk or kind of an afternoon one before I leave. And, uh, you know, besides being a beautiful um, area right by the water, it also has the highest concentration of um, colonial houses anywhere in the country. Um, and it's evident by these cool old houses there, all different colors and vibes about it and uh actually i'm in the process of uh finalizing images for my 2025 new england wall calendar i do one of those every year and i'm trying to get it done earlier than ever this year to get it up for pre-order into the printer but one of the image images in there is from this walk uh that i did on my last trip in july but that will be in the calendar so keep an eye out for that and the pre-order and all that info which should be out in the next uh I don't know, a week or two, the longest. So, um, but you know, if you go to Newport anytime, I recommend a walk through that neighborhood. Um, I've done it in late October as well. It's cool with the fall vibes and some of the Halloween decorations as well. Um, so, you know, I again, I set up to stay there with them to get some shots. They they mainly whenever I do these, I kind of ask if there's certain um, you know, spots, places parts of the property, et cetera, that you can just use photos of you don't have. I don't want to be redundant. Also here to, you know, help them out. And uh, most stuff was generated towards, you know, the outside amenities and just those kind of vibes and views. I think they were all set with a lot of the inside stuff. So that's where I'd focus. And then also just kind of freestyle like I usually do. But it is nice to have some guidelines there. So I always do ask. Um, so I, I checked in uh, early... Sunday afternoon, the room wasn't ready, so I grabbed a bite out there at that torpedo lounge. Um, but the room was amazing. Uh, had a couch in it as well, little table to work on, and then it had a private little 
kind of balcony deck looking out at the water and just from the room when you're walking out you didn't see like the little bit of kind of um you know paved area below it and then it almost like looked like you're on a cruise ship because it was just like just water out there and i had the the bridge to the right and actually the rose island lighthouse was straight out in front so uh beautiful room and also you can't beat the views so grateful for that it, it made the uh, whole experience that much better when i stayed in july it was just uh just use some uh, travel points I had built up because it was a last minute stay in July when it's crazy there and uh, just had a basic room with, with no view. So they do have those as well. And, uh, you know, it's still pretty expensive now to stay there, but uh, I believe the prices once you hit that shoulder season start going down and then, you know, you go there later on and uh, more off season, you know I, know, I know the amount could be a lot less. Obviously, you're not going to be lounging in the pool, but you could still stay, you know, on the beautiful property and, you know, have those views at a lower price. So, um, check it out at any point. Um, you know, if you're looking for somewhere to stay in Newport also, um, you know, a place to kind of check out, you could even go there and just eat as well. You don't have to just stay there. Um, some other spots in Newport I've stayed, the Brenton hotel is another one I've worked with before. I love the vibe there. Also the location. So check that out. Um, Hammett's hotel is another I've worked with right down there, uh, Hammett's Wharf. So kind of down the street a little bit from Bowen's Wharf, going towards all the, the uh, stores there. Another nice spot. Um, and then last time I was there, I stayed at the Beech Tree Inn. And that's more of a B&B, &B, um, a little more up, not on the water. Um, but that was a cool vibe, again, if you're looking for to not be around more of the busy area. Um, so yeah, I, I probably stayed there four or five times. It's now five plus. You know, it is one of those spots I do a lot of day trips or just head home at night afterwards because it is not that far of a ride back to Guilford. Um, but uh, so again, you know, the the main focus of the stay would be, you know, from the property there. But one thing I wanted to do I had never done there is to take one of those, uh, you know, cruises they do around the harbor or along the coast just to get views kind of looking back to the co the shore and just kind of see what else and just enjoy being out in a boat. So. Um, I had seen before one of the main ones over there is Newport Classic Cruises, and they offer five different ships, their fleet. Um, there's a couple schooner sailboats, a couple classic motor yachts, really nice, like wooden, kind of old school looking classy boats, and a classic sailing yacht, smaller one. Um, I wanted, I figured I would do like a sunset one. They started at 6 20 and end about just before 8 o'clock. So I knew that. Even if there wasn't any clouds, I go out and, you know, the light by then, hour and a half from sunset would be pretty decent. So it wouldn't be harsh light and you never know what kind of sunset you'll get. Um, and I decided on the Adirondack 2. It's a full-fledged sailboat. I figured, you know, the vibes, since for the first time me doing one there, I should go with the classic sailboat since, you know, Newport is known, you know, for its sailing and obviously the history goes back pretty far there um so this adirondack 2 it's an 80 foot turn of the century style pilot scooter and uh it was actually completed the building of it in 1999 and then it's made its way to newport to replace the original adirondack 1 which uh was shipped off to chelsea piers in new york city i believe to do some cruises there i would i would venture to guess but so that's how they came upon the Adirondack 2, and that's the one I went out on. And it was awesome. Uh, it was a nice, calm night, and uh, I mean, had some wind, but it wasn't too choppy or anything. And uh, it was great to see the, the harbor from that perspective. And uh, we didn't go out too far. I think they said some of the other boats, like the Rum Runner, one of those classic motor yachts, you know, um, kind of goes out a little further. It's obviously able to control its flow a little more. And gets out more to like Castle Hill, the lighthouse there, and a little closer to Rose Island. So another time if it works out, I'd like to try one of those just to get a different perspective on it. But overall, can't say good things about it, you know, enough. Uh, the crew, there was three crew members on there. They were all great. They they have like a bar going. They serve like um, some beer, different wine. They have a few um, uh, cocktails, dark and stormy I grabbed. Then they have some non-alcoholic stuff as well. So. Um, but yeah, just really good vibes all around. They give you a kind of a nice little, um, you know, uh, kind of tour, 
he says a little bit it's not like overbearing or anything one of the interesting spots was where um kennedy jfk had a spot up there you know they were married downtown newport I forget the name of the church it's slip in my mind at the moment but he had like their little kennedy property there and i believe he was saying something he basically had like a second like oval office set up there with like a desk and everything to look like it so he could he'd do some of his duties there while he was in newport and would be like half dressed up and then be able to go out um with his bathing suit on and you know vacation and be with his family and such so it was cool to see that property there um as well i guess it was a pretty big wedding celebration from what he said um, but again, I was, you know, I was just in Hyannis last month too, getting more of the Kennedy vibes and history. So I'm not, you know, too, um, up to all the details on it. So I know some people, if you're into it, you know, Hyannis one spot, and obviously he has these ties to Newport as well, but, um, clouds came in and didn't really get anything for like a sunset, but there was some great shots with some cool light for a while. So I'm excited to kind of dig into those and pick out a few to edit but overall experience was great and can't recommend them enough so that's newport classic cruises check them out they um you know they have scheduled boats morning afternoon sunset ones for the different uh ships in their fleet they also offer like private charters you could do as well so if you have a group or like some kind of uh you know outing you're looking to do and go together you can contact them uh as well um and it was really cool. Actually, one of the things I liked a lot was they have a, a water taxi that's just free to you staying there at the, the resort. Um, they, I believe every half hour. So if you, you know, you just show up, they tell you the schedule at the front desk. And uh, they take you right from Newport Harbor Island Resort right over to Bowen's Wharf there, which is where I got on the um, Sunset Sailboat Cruise. But also, obviously, there's all the restaurants, bars, stores, etc. So I, I didn't. I didn't get in a car, you know, I dropped the car off at Valley Parking, then I was there, and I didn't get back into my car until I left uh, Tuesday morning, you know, to, to go right back to Connecticut to open up my store, but, um, so it, it was nice to do that, it was very unconventional for my type of New England getaways, but uh, I really did enjoy it, um, but yeah, having that water taxi, like, it's no charge, you just tip the, you know, the guy bringing you over, um, if you'd like, and you should, and, um, after the cruise was over, this one spot over there I want to check out called The Reef. And uh, I liked the vibe a lot. The drink was good. Uh, the appetizer, the spicy tuna crispy rice, was actually very good. And then I had a craving for a lobster roll. You know, I'm so spoiled by all the, you know, the best anywhere I've had in Maine and some other spots. And I just haven't had a lot of them yet this year. So I was craving one and I, I definitely, I don't know, I, I, I shouldn't order them from restaurants because it's just 9.5 times out of 10 from a restaurant. It's just not great compared to all the amazing shacks, you know, along the main coast and other places. And I even asked the guy, I said, hey, I'm really in, feeling one. He said, like, is the meat fresh or has it been frozen or anything? Like, I don't care either way. I just like to know if I'm going to order it. And uh, he's like, no, no, it's all fresh and blah, blah. Okay. And then the roll came and... You know, it definitely wasn't super fresh and it was dry and got some extra butter and it just wasn't, you know. So I, I knew in the back of my head I shouldn't have ordered it, but I, I did anyway. And it was a mistake. But, you know, the spot itself was nice. The reef, um, you know, drink was good and the app was good. And I've heard they have good other food. I think I just need to remember what to kind of stick with. And uh, so at that point, it was too late. The water taxi was done, but. Even there, you can walk back through the causeway. It was like 20, under 25 minute walk. So, not bad at all. It was like a beautiful night. So, again, it was just nice not to worry, have to drive anywhere, and you can kind of just enjoy and have a, an adult beverage or two uh, if you like. Um, you know, and then I got back and the, the fire pits were still going. So, I sat down. I got some photos there of that. And uh, yeah, that was, that was day, day one and fit a lot in. Um, next day, kind of walked a little in the morning and then. You know, just kind of uh, kind of relaxed on the property a bit, and it was nice. I had my laptop out, sitting there on the uh, on the deck, looking out at the water, and had my camera by me. And uh, it was roughly it was around eleven thirty on um, Monday morning. Heard this like crazy loud roar, and looked up to the right to see this formation of military planes just kind of fly by, do this like pass. And you know, there's like you know a number of uh, there's like 
the War College. There's a number of like military type things there in Newport, so I didn't think much of it. But then I kind of heard it coming again, so I grabbed my camera and it did another similar pass. Then they looped around and they started heading in front of where I was, kind of towards uh, in front of the bridge. And right when they got there, they started letting off um, like smoke, colored smoke. And it was red, white, and green. And they did this formation of nine of them, tight formation. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll have the uh, photos up here so you can see. And uh, they did that, looped around, did one more pass the other way, and they were gone. And I was like, well, had no idea what it was all about. You know, it came out of nowhere, but I was glad I had my camera ready. And uh, someone said, oh, they thought they saw something that had to do with the um, Italian Air Force. And then looked it up and come to find out it was the Italian Air Force. And it was uh, in honor of uh, the 500th anniversary of uh, Giovanni di Verrazzano um, coming into the Narragansett Bay and landing in Rhode Island. So 1524, he landed there, which is pretty wild, 500 years ago. And this was kind of a thing as far as, uh, you know, the Italian and um, connection to Rhode Island. And then after they did go to Providence, I'm not sure where else they went. Um, but it was really neat. And I was glad to be right place, right time to capture it. So always have your camera ready with a full battery and empty memory card there near you because you don't know what's going to happen. So I was grateful to capture something cool. And, uh, you know, again, it was just nice to relax out there on the property, um, very low key and saw some people cause it was Monday. We're doing some work from outside and, uh, just got some editing done. Um, you know, answered emails, et cetera. It didn't really feel like work from where I was. And then, uh, there was a threat of some storms ripping through possible hail. Saw in Connecticut, people were getting hail and just, you know, could see the clouds coming in. So at that point I just went inside. Um, Warwick and some other areas did get pelted. Um, we didn't there in Newport, luckily, but you know, just stayed inside for a couple hours, um, either in kind of like a lobby area or in the room a bit, again, just working and, uh, waited it out. And then wasn't sure what I was going to do for sunset, but it looked like it was going to clear enough. I wasn't sure, you know, what sunset would be, but, um, was able to get, you know, some awesome shots of sunset there of, you know, crazy lighting on Rose Island Lighthouse out there, which you could stay there out in the lighthouse. That's another one on my bucket list. Um, I have to try to make that happen next year. But uh, that was a beautiful, like, distant subject. Obviously, you have the Newport Pell Bridge there as well. And, um, yeah, so it was uh, one of those after-the-storm sunsets, and it was great. Um, did a late dinner right at the uh, lounge there outside and had the fish and chips, which I had before, and it was awesome. I um, have to say it's one of the better fish and chips I've had anywhere in New England. So can recommend that. And it was, uh, you know, it helped make up a bit for the the bummer lobster roll the night before. Uh, and, uh, yeah, trying to think what else, you know, involved in my stay there. Um, oh, I did. Yeah, actually, I forget. I did have lunch from down. I was actually sitting in these Adirondack chairs, like right by the water near that pineapple club little thing down by the by the pool in the water area. And, you know, they have um, servers come over and they'll bring you food like right there to the chairs. So I was under this tree getting some shade, just working on my laptop by the water. So it was awesome. Um, I had some chicken tender basket and this Mariner's Delight mixed drink. That's like their special drink. So, so yeah, so it was productive. I, you know, I got a lot of work done for my own personal work. I was able to get a lot of great content for the hotel, which, you know, I'm going to be editing this week and then posting like a recap on my story. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and yeah, I actually got some like R and R in, which is rare for me when I go places. So, um, so yeah, it was a great stay at Newport Harbor Island resort. Definitely check it out. You know, if you're looking for, uh, you know, a nice stay in Newport, something kind of different. And, uh, like I said, it's definitely something where, you, you know, you won't even have to leave. So, um, that's it for now. And, uh, hope you guys have a great week. Have a great Labor Day weekend coming up. Stay safe and eat a bunch of good food. We'll see what the weather brings and uh, I'll see you guys next week.